Okay, guys, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me and give me a thumbs up in the general chat. Give me a thumbs up in the general chat if you can hear me. All right, very nice. Or you can give me a thumbs up here on Zoom. Very nice, okay, very nice. We're gonna do a 10 minute trade recap from 427.22. Came out of the day with about, uh, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five. So six of seven successful trades, 10% win, 30% win, a 136% win, 20%, 20%, negative 10%, and a 60%, uh, percent which um, for the first half of the uh, trade and then the rest of the trade went on to come out to about uh, 120% on that side. But uh, on average, it was about 101% win, just the way that I uh, managed the position size. All right. So the call out was made in the Discord. Let's see if I can bring this up. The call out was made in the Discord uh, at this. 42880 area. And uh, for early in the morning here around this uh, 10 a.m., uh, again, we did not take the run up. Some folks did. I think we took the, the last moment scout here, but we didn't take most of the run up, right? That was an aggressive buy up, and, that, and that's fine. That, that's what we expected. According to our pre market, uh, we got what we expected, right? So we certainly we were ready for that. OK, and so if you can see right here in the discord, let me bring this over so you can see it, folks. In the discord, the call out was made. Let's see here. In calls 944, it was a quick scalp, right? 10 percent move right around here. We just took this remaining pop right here. So that's the first move. Right. That's one of the six successful trades that we made yesterday. Right. After that. Uh, we were ready to uh, go into a killer move here around this area, this time frame right here, right? So right around my entry here was around the 428.1 area. You can clearly see here, 957 inputs. The intention was to scalp and then slide the stop as we move, right? And then quickly we, were, we went into profit. Quickly we went into profit by here, right? So by 1020, we had already fired off three successful trades at 10%, 30%, and 136%. So if you had followed along there, you, you certainly were up. So there were other successful trades here. Uh, there was a losing trade, which reversed for 10%. And I'm going to talk about that one right here, right now. Let's discuss that the one losing trade that we took, that I took. Uh, I don't know if some of you guys followed, some of you guys didn't. And let's discuss that because it's important to um, also uh, discuss the losing trades and why it's a losing trade. All right. Let me let me help you with something. A losing trade is not a loser because you lose money. That's not a losing trade. All right. So the fact that I took a 10 percent loss on this trade right here, right here, does not mean that it's a loser. Right. What it what it tells me is. The reason why it's a loser is because I and the trade did not follow along with the thesis. If a person doesn't follow along, they follow with their thesis, their setup, then that's a losing trade. Now, here's what I mean. This trade, based on the, the wicks of the day, right? We're already getting some very pretty nasty wicks. So you know that you're going to have some dancing with the stock. If I enter the trade around this area, and the trade breaks down past the price level and it comes barely to another price level. This means that the trade number one hit the profit target. Uh, the, the expected move, I expected us to come down lower to our daily level down here on the first trade, right? On the first trade, okay? So I expected us to come down a little lower there. However, um, we, we didn't. We did not breach that level. So, um, we got an immediate candle reversal here, which blew past my entry point. And this aggressive action um, caused me to exit the trade, right? Caused me to exit the trade. Now, if, if you're noticing the candlestick patterns, we have the same aggressive action and virtually the same span around 1221, 
right? And yet and still we come back down, right? So this move in this area in here was the exact same entry from earlier today. This tells me that as according to our thesis in this area here, sellers, there's volume, there's a reason to sell off in this area. For whatever reason, currently on this day, we are, we are selling off, right? We are, well, you could say sellers are defending. People like to use that phrase, sellers are defending. But the reality is there's, there's, there's more selling pressure up here than there is buying pressure. So this is why you get these aggressive moves to the downside as you come up in here. But conversely, because of volatility being so wicked um, this day, you see these wicks in the, in, and then you see these crazy pops here that we, we, we got, right? Each time we come down to some zones now, right? So this first trade here, because this candle was so aggressive, I elected to exit the trade, right? Uh, we could have just been sitting through a base area here and I didn't wanna, I didn't want this thing to blow past uh, 422.8 area and then just, you know, take you out completely, take me out completely. So this, uh, it was a good trade in that it was significantly into profit. And what I should have done is move the stop down on this one. But because the reverse happened so fast, you know, I wasn't able to get stopped out here, took a loss 10%, no big deal, right? It happens, it happens, okay? It happens. So that's the first trade there, right? That's the first trade there. Now, well, let's talk about, uh, Let's talk about, uh, and let me let me put that out here. What time was this? This was around uh, the first trade. This is around, I would say this um, 1.15, somewhere around here, somewhere around there, right? Well, let's talk about the winning trade, right? Let's talk about the one for the backside of the day, all right? That one was called out. Um, let's see here, I'm gonna find this. You know what? The, the second trade was called out around here. The first trade was here. Yeah, this is this is what it was. This was the first trade around 1142. I'm looking at the notes here. This trade went into profit, but then, you know, this 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 um, crazy action here reversed, and uh, I elected to exit. So uh, again, an entry at my level. We go significantly into profit. We actually hit a level I was expecting to come down to our daily. We didn't get it. So this is a perfect example of just, you know, sliding your stop, being content with what you got, right? Being content with what you got. Now, the the, the next trade, or really the, the, the final trade of the day um, was called out here. Let's see here. Let's see here, we'll hold puts, right? I am prepared to hold, right? We'll hold puts, I am prepared to hold. So this time, I came in this trade at uh, 108, right here, right above my level, right above 428.1, same trade that I played here, same trade here. So if you really look at what, what, what happened yesterday, I just simply played the same trade over and over, right? We did play some scalps on some calls, but this is the same trade, right? Same trade, right? So, so this one here was a profitable trade that I allowed to go negative, because I expected more and you have to just deal with that, right? But now here we are at 108 and this is the same trade, right? Again, the trade goes immediately into profit, right? Immediately into profit. The entry is above 420.81, okay? But I am still expecting a lower downside. So now what tells me now that I'm gonna get the move? All right, so two things. I want you to pay attention to two things, all right? And then uh, we'll do pre-market um, in the voice, but this is a, a snippet of what tier three access gets you. We'll, we'll start doing pre-market in these recaps before the market on some days or at times, and uh, we'll start um, you know, doing screen share, live trade screen share, things like that to uh, help you guys visualize and see. That's gonna be for selected access, all right? Right now, no worries, everything is gonna stay the same, Discord completely free, don't worry about that. 
And obviously the general challenge call outs, all that stuff will, will still remain the way it is uh, free to those who uh, follow the rules, of course. All right, so what, why, why take the same trade again, KDW? What, what are you doing? All right, the first thing you need to understand is price action, price action, all right? You got to zoom out and look at the price action of the day. Don't worry about these wicks because you're, you're dialed in too close, right? You're, you're probably looking at this thing and saying, man, this is crazy. I don't know where it's going to go. The reality is we are holding between a weekly level at 416.56 and a daily level at 422.82, right? And we have a, a daily level at 418.09. And uh, we really base there before we break hard to the upside on the on the open, okay? But we keep getting rejection in this area. So from a risk to reward standpoint, if you were to enter a, a trade to the downside when there's aggressive sell-off, right? In our pre-market, we were cautious to bearish this day. So, you know, this day actually ended up being a doji. So both pieces could have been correct, but I, I still, you know, was in support of the, the, the bearish thesis because we, it, it was just such a, a wicked out day, right? But you could have gone and played, you know, whichever way you like. But I'm paying attention to the area or the zone where I am seeing the most resistance, right? What's the highest probability that if I enter a put at 428.1, what's the highest probability I'll be able to remain in profit, take some profit, make major profit and or um, not take a substantial loss. Well, it's, it's by the time we get around here, it's high. And actually at 108, it's high. Why? All right. We got one rejection here. We got a second rejection here. This candle here, right? Opens right here goes up into this same area, gets wicked out, pushed down aggressively. As we make our ascent back to the same area, 422 area, right? We have one rejection here. Zoom out, you can see it. Two rejections, three rejections. Let's count these so far. One, two, three, four, five. Well, I don't know about you, but anytime you see a stock constantly rejecting, constantly rejecting and never breaking a zone or an area or a, a price level with any type of uh, aggression or follow through, you can expect that sellers are sitting, there is some type of pressure here and you can expect a move more than often. Is it always gonna happen? Nothing always happens, but 90% of the time, maybe even 95%, you will get a move and it just depends on your entry. So let's talk about that. What's the best entry for the move? Well, the best entry for the move is anywhere at this level here, anywhere up there. That's the best entry for the move. So if I know that this is the best entry for the move, let me just watch that area. And this is for all you guys who, who ask me um, really good questions. And you ask me, well, well, what is your risk to reward? You know, what is your uh, setup? What, what are you looking at? What's your exit? So I'm, I'm giving you guys that now. I'm helping you to see what I'm looking at to gauge a risk to reward, right? So I know this is my area, my target area of entry. It's my best area of entry. I know that I'm getting rejection. One, two, three, four, five. So I already entered one trade that went into profit. That went into profit. And because I got this aggressive candle here, well, I elected maybe we're going to run up, right? And the reality is I, I should have still held it, right? But after I see this confirmation here, there's, there is a high probability I'm, I'm coming down lower now. Now, Look at the nasty wick action here. So I didn't really have the, the, the confidence in the trade to enter here. This is just an area where the confirmation for, hey, this thing is breaking down. Now, as I get some follow through to my next level, I've got to get in the trade. 
So, aha, 108 when the call, or 109 rather, when the call out was made, I'm in the trade, right? So I'm in this trade right here, right here, okay? I'm in the trade right, actually right above it, right there, okay? Now, as the trade dances around, as you saw in the Discord call out, I said, well, I'm willing to hold, I'm willing to hold, which means I, I went into profit immediately and I'm willing to hold. I saw some red. But now look at look at what kind of confirmation I get. I get another rejection in the same area. Then what, what else do I get? I get another rejection in the same area. Then what else do I get? I get an even lower rejection. Not in the same area, even lower, all right? At this point in the day, at this point, I've got this. And then if you look at this, guys, you can clearly see, right? You can clearly see an interesting um, setup starting form here. You notice this 42012 area, we get some strong defensive moves, right? So around this area, something between 422 pressure, right, sellers, and 420, some type of buying pressure is sitting. And so what we're doing is we're just waiting on one of those um, groups to break down, one of those groups to break down. So as I'm noticing all these rejections up here, we could, we could stretch this out a little bit more to here. Look at that. Look at that. All right. We're getting all this rejection up here. If you zoom out, you can see it. Right. Then. Even though we break down more and we get a uh, some more defensive move, right? For for buyers stepping in here, uh, this behavior is not as strong as the, the the previous action, the previous price action in candles, and it's lower. Aha! It's lower than our entry level, right? It's oh, it's lower than our entry level. So for all of you pattern traders and all of that stuff, you know. You can call it whatever you want, right? You're going to say, well, we've got some lower highs and lower lows, all of that stuff. Yeah. But the price action is telling, even though we're getting some wicks, zoom out so you can get an idea of what, what's happening, right? At that point, I'm sipping tea, right? <laughs> because I know we're going to break down. And at the very least, I can slide my stop here, here, or here as we go and make major profit. And I slid it all the way down. And where did we touch? Right here, right? We, we came to the overall profit target. So what helped me to know when to hold this trade to the backside? The first trade that I took went into profit. It was a good trade and my exit made it a bad trade. That's the reality. It was a good trade, right? But this thing, right? reversed on us, right? Boom. I think it was, it was somewhere around here. I, I you know, the, the exact entry, I know it was somewhere around and I feel like it was closer to this, this area here. I feel like it was right here this time, right? In fact, I know it was, it was somewhere around here. And then, yeah, I expected follow through, right? Didn't get it. Didn't get it. Got, you know, you know, cooked on this candle right here. Somebody even in the trade said, oh, you know, whatever got cooked on that, what have you. And that's fair. That happens. But when the same setup happens again, do not be afraid to take the trade based on the day. The, the thesis and the setup for the day is still there. It's still there. So you can't be paralyzed and you can't be so scared and you can't be so negative that it, it blinds you from effectively trading, right? You have to manage the day. Discipline your disappointments. I'm going to say it again. Discipline your disappointments, guys. You've got successful trades. By this time, we had three trades successful, 136, a 20 and a 30, or 10 and 30. So we're heavily into profit. So this one trade, no way does it wipe out all the profits that you had unless you are mismanaging and being greedy, quite frankly. And you know if you are. 
So when the trades go against you or when something happens, you in a bear market, in a very uh, sporadic market, you're going to have to understand that you need to let the trade work itself out. Let the trade work itself out. Zoom out, try to get a bigger picture, get the bigger picture here, and understand that all you did was play the exact same trade. And you, as the day go on, goes on, you are now getting added confirmation that you're good to enter anywhere in this area. So this is how I know once we start getting these wicks, you know what? I just pan out and I say, what, what's happening today? What's going on? Don't, don't be so dialed in and looking at the crazy wicks and this stuff. Okay, that's fine. But by the time you see this activity, you know, all right, I'm going to have some crazy wicks. You know, it's 11 o'clock. So zoom out. Zoom out, especially if you take a loss based on a reversal, some type of wick, wicked out action. Zoom out then you can clearly see the bigger picture. All right, I don't care what the wick is doing here. Where is the stock going? Then you can get into your trade and you can go, you know, the trade will work out where you want. Now, what can you do to protect yourself? You can size down, you can size down, right? That's, that's the primary thing you wanna do when you're uncertain or when you're getting very, you know, disjointed behavior, all right? The second thing you can do, you're going to have to get good at uh, understanding mental stop losses. And, and I'm going to make a video on that. Um, if you're watching this video, I'll post it on YouTube. Maybe check the link, you know, in the description on YouTube when I post it. I'll make a video on mental stop losses. Because what's happening to some of you guys is you're so nervous because of maybe inexperienced behavior or whatever, or greed or fear. You're so nervous. Your stop loss is so tight. You just, you just keep taking these, you know, death by a thousand cuts. You keep taking these small incremental losses. And you, before you know it, you don't have any money or capital to trade the backside of the day. You don't have any. Or you get discouraged or whatever. Listen. Learn to read the overall direction. This is why we develop and talk about a pre-market thesis. A pre-market thesis isn't, it's not a prediction. It's not a, a gamble or a bet, right? It's, it's, a, it's a playbook. And that playbook says, if I see this, I'm going up. If I see that, I'm going down. That's all the playbook is. That's all the thesis is. So when you guys say, where are we going today? I want to answer that once and for all now. When anyone asks me, where are we going today? The answer, it really, in my mind is, I don't care. Where, what does it matter where we're going? What, what does it matter where we're going? That, that question has got to be one of the most the weirdest questions for a day trader, who cares? I'm not swinging this. The reality is once, based on my thesis, I, if I hold at 416.56 and I break through a daily and I get the confirmation I'm blowing through volume levels, man, get in that trade, right? And take it to the next major level. Oh, I got hard rejection. I do not come past 421.98, then get in that trade. Double rejection, get in, take it to the next major level. I don't care where we go. I am a day trader between the hours of seven and five. Swing trading, yes, I absolutely care. So a little bit of this, a little bit of this is you guys are gonna have to rethink some things and continue to work on your mindset. This is, this is why I talk about it so much. I can teach you the skills for sure. There are dozens of people trading at a high level in the Wealth Wells Discord, and you can see it. You can absolutely see it, folks crushing it every single day, all right? Every single day, right? This is what the day ended up for me in the Discord. Some of you guys, nine for nine, I see, I see you there, Rob. Nice, NC, eight for eight, killing it, 120, right? Six of seven wins, two large wins at 136 and 120. The average of this win here was 101 for me. Right. 
crushed it, guys. Absolutely crushed it. You can do the same. All right. So I'm telling you this before we start our pre-market. The pre-market will be live in the voice channel. All right. In the voice channel, I'm going to end this uh, call here and uh, we're going to jump right in here in the voice channel, the spy only voice channel. And uh, we're going to we're going to do the live there. All right. Uh, Pre-market there in about five minutes. But uh, this is just a trade week recap and a quick lesson on how to read price action in choppy markets. All right. How do I read price action? when I'm getting these nasty wicks and this nasty behavior, how you zoom out, right? You, you, you pan out and you look for the target areas where buyers and sellers are sitting. You overlay that with your levels. You get into the trade based on your thesis and you leave it alone. You let it work itself out, all right? So I'll talk a little bit about those stop losses and things like that as we go. Say it with me. I will crush the day. Let's go ahead and do our pre-market prep in the live channel in about uh, five minutes, guys. I'm so pumped to crush this thing again. Green all day, every day. That's what we're about in this Discord, guys. I'll see you guys in the uh, voice channel. KDW signing out.